Check that out, guys. That is my first ever red mullet. Ah, it has made my day. Look at that. That's my first ever one. I am absolutely buzzing with that. And yeah, it's cooking up lovely. Now, let's bring it down for a look. That looks banging. Well, welcome back, guys. As you can tell, you join me back on the big beach, the mighty chisel, and an angry chisel as well. That is some big surf out there. I'm not sure if you're able to pick up on the camera. This roller coming in now, look. That is angry. I would not want to go swimming in that. But we've already been fishing for probably an hour to two hours, and I've had a couple of dogs, a few poked in. But we've lost a few ends. And uh, basically where the surf is grabbing your line. And where it drops off here is another shelf where the shingle drops off a bit back further. And it's grabbing your line that you're dragging the shingle. And once it goes in that, it's just game over. You get the you get majority of the way, you can feel the judging through the shingle of your line. And then it gets to a point where your rig hits it and then it just cuts you off straight away. So I've got my reels. Well, rods up high on my stand, do my best. But I just had a nice double shot, actually. I say nice double shot, but a double shot. A doggy. We all love to catch a doggy. It's been a while since I've caught one of these. We all love a doggy. And a nice tub mackerel. Tub mackerel. So I really just say tub mackerel. Tub gurnard. Will he get his fins open for us? He's grunting. Look at fins on him. Look at that. Absolutely stunning colours, look. I do love these things. You'll be able to hear that grunting. But he's grunting. He's not happy, so we'll get him back anyway. And as usual, I'll do my best to bring a few fish back for you. I'm going to keep persisting with this serve because I know there'll be fish out there, obviously catching them now, but it's just hard work. So I'm probably going to just stick to one rod for a bit and try and fish a bit more, you know, accurately with one rod. It's slowly easing. It, it was low water about an hour ago, so it's flooding up now. So as that tide, the, the tide pushes over that bottom ledge, fingers crossed, once, the depth of water, once there's a depth of water above that ledge, the swell should ease. So, that's my theory. I'm going to get these fish unhooked. Hey, that doggy's roughing me up. Get these fish. They're both unhooked. Get them both back, back home. And stay tuned and see what else we catch. Well, as you guys can imagine, if you've watched any of my other videos on Chesil, rig-wise, there's just three clip downs, 16 inch, well, between 16 and 18 inch hook links, size two hooks, mixed with rigs with pop-ups and without, seven ounce leads, size two hooks, the usual crack and my competition match GTs. Pen fathom lever drags. Let's cast it out there. Let that sink. Keep my rod up nice and high with that swell look. And fingers crossed you don't get shingled again. Well guys, it's turned into a pretty tough session, you know. I got a feeling there's nets or something out in front of us because every time it comes in close, where that big swell's raising up now, it gets stuck. I'm convinced there's something out there. So, Let's see what this happens. See, it comes up fine when you read them in. Let's see if it happens now. No fish on there, but will it get stuck? Reeling really fast. No, I got it back.
right on target. Right on target. Well guys, we uh, had a bit of a mare, or we were having a bit of a mare, mainly Robbie. I haven't even said yet, my good old buddy, Robbie Grattan's with me today, and young Dan Winter. Well, he's unlocked himself now. But basically, Robbie was losing gear, and Dan was losing gear, so that, I think it was nets and clothes or something, because we were getting stuck all the time. So we moved, we made, you know, an executive decision to move, and I've cast out a rod, and uh, before I'd had a chance to set the camera, if I had a bite on it, and a nice black green was the result. And a lovely chunky one. Look at that one. Stunning. Black bream. It's a nice chunky fat one, that one. That one's going for the frying pan, if you haven't guessed already. But before we moved, Dan had a nice bream, probably about the same sort of size. So he's buzzing, his first ever black bream, or bream of any species, I think it is. So uh, a lovely fish as well. It was about the same sort of size. We're gonna cook one up for lunch, so you'll be seeing that shortly. So we're gonna continue fishing now. Get your rods back out there. Let's see what it holds. So, I don't know. Stay tuned, I suppose. See you in a bit. I had a lovely bite then. I walked over there to cast out and uh, looked around and it was banging away well. Very well, actually. Probably only another bream, but still a bite. And now he stopped. I think we got a fish on, guys. I had a nice bite anyway. Oh, feels like there's something there. Oh, I got a red mullet. Yes. Hey. Oh, that is lucky. Check that out, guys. That is my first ever red mullet. That has made my day. Look at that. That's my first ever one. I am absolutely buzzing with that. That has made my day. Look at the colours on him. Now well, basically, that is one of the nicest. Whoa, I'm dropping him. What I was saying was that is one of the nicest eating fish in the world. Or the nicest, actually. So, I'm sorry to all you people out there that are like, lovely colours on him. Put it back. I'm not putting it back. I'm going to take it home and I'm going to eat him. But, I've been after one of these for a long, old time. And I've finally had one. No monster. But, oh, he's a lively one. But I'm absolutely buzzing with that. Happy days, my first red mullet. Good bite on it, mind. Powerful little guy. I thought it was a gurnard when it was coming in. That was on a bit of ragworm, I think. It was on the middle, like I think it was. Oh, no, it was on crab. I wouldn't. So there we are, guys. Red mullet down here on Chesil Beach. Check the colours on that. I said they're ready, they would do a catch and cook. And this lovely bream, I can't remember, I think it's mine, the one I had, or the one uh, Dan had. But I'll show Philip, because I'm going to fillet him up, give him a coat of flour, and we'll fry him up in a frying pan. So, I know what you're going to say. Why are you filleting a fish to eat on the dirty chopping board? It's all I got. Most of that is cuttle fishing, so it's not like it's uh, going to kill us. So, uh, work with me. Do my best here. I'm an old Rick Stein in the fancy kitchen. So, uh, basically, I leave this, if I'm frying bream, I leave the skin on, but obviously they've got loads of scales. So to scale them, I use my 
nice fancy pantsy Tronix Pro filleted knife. Turn the knife upside down, or the blade upside down, and then just scrape it from tail to head. And then basically you just cover the whole fish. Don't worry too much about the belly section because I, I don't typically fill it that part of the fish. So I use the tip of that knife to sit upside down up against the dorsal fin. Some people cut them off, but it's just something you don't really need to do in my opinion. So. Now, if you are doing this at home, what I advise, because it is a messy job scaling fish, fill your sink up with water and do it underwater. You can use an upside down knife like I'm using now. You can use a spoon or what you can use, which I use myself when I do fish at home, is an actual filleting tool, um, a scaling tool. It's basically like a little dome shaped thing on a handle and it's got loads of little tiny teeth on it and it just scrapes all the, the uh, scales off. But there we go. That is all scaled, you can see. See all the scales gone. Around the part that we're gonna fill it anyway. Like I said, it's a messy job. I think I got a bite, but never mind. Get this with filleted on. Try and get all the scales off, because they're not nice to have in your food, obviously. Right, so the next, obviously, is filleting it. Typically, I do like to have a bucket of water just to give a little rinse to get the scales off and any blood. But like I said, we're not really having the luxury of a kitchen. And I ain't getting a bucket from the sea because I'll get drowned. So, like I said, work with me. And then I typically have the fish towards me, like so. And then I start by making a little slit up by the dorsal fin. And I basically use the, from the bottom, halfway to the half point of the knife, just to get myself started, because you'll find the sharpest point of the knives typically are the bait, especially bait knives where they're getting battered all the time, because that typically isn't really getting used. So you'll find that is quite a sharp part of the knife to get you started. And then I flip the knife over, and I run my fillet in, the, well, the tip of the blade all the way down. And then as you get to the base of the tail, I go right the way through and just cut along. And then what I do, I pull, I put my hand on the side of the fish, pulling down to the belly, and as you basically, I say basically a lot, don't I, when I do stuff like this, but never mind. But as you work along the spine there, by pulling it down to the belly, you sort of pull the meat back up a bit so it's just easier to get to. And then once that's done, I just get that bottom done as well. And then I go in right behind the head, come right down, and then come back on a slight angle up towards the top of the head to get all the meat. Now this is the step that not many people do. But that red, that fillet is now ready to come off. But I leave that on for the time being. Then I flip the fish over and get the other side to that same stage. Because what you'll find, if you take that off now and you lay that down flat on your chopping board, so basically the spine is flat on your chopping board, I just find sometimes it's a bit awkward to get in there and get tight to the bone but by leaving that fillet on the other side, it just holds that side of the fish up and it's just a bit easier to work with. So, this knife isn't really the sharpest. I don't typically fillet fish on the beach, I do it at home. I always keep ice in the cooler box. I got two bags of ice in the cooler box and any fish that I keep, I put on ice. And then once they're done, I basically come by the head and then slice off the fillet around the bone, up on the, uh, the belly, and then get that off. So you got a nice fillet of black bream. So I lean on the shingle there, look. And then flip it over and then just literally just slice that other side off. I mean, you can fillet around the belly, but to be honest, there's a lot of bone 
as you can see there, if I leave a bit of light behind, there is no meat left on that. There's no wastage. And I find by having that, leaving that one fillet on, that one side, and then when you flip it over, I find it's easier just to get in against that bone. But, but yeah, there's no meat left on that boy. That's food for the seagulls. So anyway, I've got my fillets there. And what I'll do next before I fillet them, I have fillet them, basically get all the bones out, prep it for, for cooking. I've got a clean rag here just to keep you all pleased and happy. You'll basically see a little ridge there where the bones are from the belly. I cut that out. Just put a little slice down the lateral line basically. That's where all the, the bones are. And I flip it over. And you'll find when you're frying, sometimes the fillet will curl in the pan. So basically to avoid that, I literally put a few little nicks in the skin. Like I said, this knife isn't the sharpest. So it's not as good as a job as what I would do if I was doing it at home. But again, Work with me a bit, I'm on a beach here. Right, so there we have two lovely fillets of a black bream. So let's get cooking. Right, well, unfortunately, guys, I might just turned off for some reason. So what I was trying to say, I just looked back at the video and I noticed there was no sound. But as you can see, the fish is cooking up lovely here. What I do, I bring a little steel tub of flour that's already been seasoned with uh, salt and pepper sealed as well so if there's any damp to it it'll just wreck it and i've worked and keep these little cabin trays just tip a bit of flour in there coat the fish up and then chuck it in now hot oil olive oil as well just literally just take a little tub with me like that with the oil there and yeah it's cooking up lovely now let's bring it down for a look That looks banging. Crisp up lovely, where's those pincers? You'll find sometimes fresh fish, when it's literally just being caught, is very soft when you fry it. Look, Look at that, lovely. That's almost cooked, you know? Gotta flip that back over them all. Look at that crisp on in. Well, it's looking pretty much done now, guys. Thankfully, because I think I've got bites on my rods over there. The right one's going bam, 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 bam. But that is done. I just I tipped the, the old flour out of here. The old excess flour. Beautiful, though. I'm going to sit back, tuck into this. Oh, he's falling off. Give some to the boys. And then check my rods. So like I said, I think they got bites on them. So, I love the same chat. I'm starving. Hope I'll be back with the fish now. Well, I was just tucking into that bream, loving it. And it was that good. I looked at my other rod, whichever one it was. I think I said I had a bite when I was cooking it. I had a bite and uh, a slightly better one again. Lovely black bream, look at that guys. He's absolutely swallowed that down. Check that out. Lovely fish. 
But let's get back into fishing now. Now the food's cooked. We'll get back and do some fishing. Try and get some more fish on the board. Let's get that rod back out there. Let's get my next rig baited up. And uh, every single fish I've had today so far has been on mackerel. I haven't had a single fish on worm, I don't think. Nothing on crab. But uh, bait-wise for today, I've got obviously mackerel, ragworm, got crab, blow lug, and a bit of sand eel. And everything, well, all the fish only want the good old mackerel. Which I do find works very well down here. So I'm just beating up my next rig. Same old, same old, three at clip downs. Just fishing slightly bigger pop ups this time. They're basically free running ones. And then I put a little float stop just above it there. And that just basically acts as a bait stop then. You bait up, I just push that down just above it. The hooks I've used are, I'll tell you what, I can't remember the name of them. But let me try and find them. So I've got a box in here somewhere. They are the, uh, there they are. I haven't used these many times, but the past couple of times I've used them and I'm absolutely loving them. They're the Tronix, the T34 worm surf hooks. What was that? A lovely little hook for this kind of fishing. Slightly soft though, but I, I tend to make a lot of rigs before I come fishing. So I, if I, you know, if the hooks are a bit bluntish or they, you bent one out, I don't mind just chucking that rig aside and getting a fresh one out. But for bream fishing, they are wicked nice and sharp little hook. So you're probably able to see the pattern on it very well. But yeah, the, the T34 Worm Surf. I'm using them in the size six today. And they are lovely. I don't typically reuse rigs. Like if like today I'm fishing a solid day, I won't like reuse the rigs I've used today. If it's only that a couple of casts with the rig, I might reuse it, but especially with the finer hooks, I don't tend to. I find they rust a bit easy. I'm just gonna bait this one up now. There's only using tiny little baits, really small little bits of mackerel. I just filleted it and just slit it down the center and then basically cut into little cubes. I've got a bite, have I? I've already seen I've got a bite. Well, I'll finish baiting this rig up anyway. Which one? Look at it. Oh, I have as well. Right, I'm going to bring this obviously to the rod and then we'll be back to bait this up. It was my right rod here this was going. I mean, not for very long. Anyone home? See that wind's picking up now. I'm getting chilly. Get a hoodie on now. Typical. Stop now. Oh, I think he's out. Yeah, I think we got one on, guys. I think we got a fish on. I got two big bream, I think. Please stay on. Oh, look at that for a double shot. Check that out, guys. Now that's how we catch bream down here on Chesil Beach. Two absolutely cracking black bream. Look at them two. Absolute chunkies. Look at the size of them bream. That bottom one's probably the biggest. That's on lugworm. There we are, the first fish I've had 
that hasn't been on mackerel. Lovely fish. This golden bugged up for you to see. Look at that. Woohoo! Now we're catching. There's fish out there now. I think my other one's on slack. One on mackerel and one on blow lug. Happy days. So I'll give you one more look before I get them unhooked and that rod straight back out there. But look at them, black bream. Two chunky fish. Can't go wrong with that, can you? I am dying to get that rod back out there already. I've already got one. I think I got a butt on another rod. So, uh, just get a, that rig baited back up now. I'll bring you back for that. Stick straight back out there and try and get another one. Or another two or three. Let's go. Alright, we just got them bream sorted out. Quickly get this rig baited back up. And get straight back out there. Just find a really small little bit to bait. We're working a treat today. I've used I've been using bigger baits on and off and nothing to any result really. But uh, every time I stick out, it's almost like the smaller the bait I'm putting on, the more bites I'm getting. Like I said, it's a pretty slow session, but it's been quite slow and steady, which is quite nice actually. Can't complain with that. There's one. Looks like that is a tiny little bit of mackerel, but that's what the fish are after. And obviously with tiny little baits, surprising you get that little bit extra distance in your, ca in your cast. I think he's got my line there. Yeah, like I was saying, it's been, a, been an enjoyable day so far. I do love it down here, i got to be fair. Even when it's not fishing amazing, it's still just a nice place to be. And I definitely highly recommend it to anyone that hasn't fished it before. It is a really nice place to be. And you never know what's going to pop up. Like even today, for what is, you know, quite a relatively slow day, I've had tub gurnards, red mullet, black bream, dogfish and pouting. Not a crazy amount of species, but it's just nice. And especially nice, it's different from my usual fishing back in South Wales. So uh, I've always liked this kind of fishing anyway, as you've probably noticed. Mixed species in. Let's get that last hook baited up now. And same as usual, obviously I've got my cooler box, as you can see in front of me, full of ice packs. I literally fill it a mackerel and I'll put the other half back in with the ice packs to keep it nice and cool, to keep the quality of it as good as I can keep it. Because when you're cutting mackerel in a little piece like this, it's a very soft bait, so the better quality you keep it in, the, the, just the neater your baits are going to be, better bait presentation, it all goes a long way. There we go. There is three baits. Three lovely little mackerel baits there, look, with the little red pop-ups. Ready to go. And these ones are slightly longer. I've got an 18 inch, not I say slightly longer, there's only a couple of inches in it. Slightly longer hook links to try. I always tend to try different stuff. So, uh, whoa. That's a fish. A slack. Very slack. Whoa. I'll bring it back. I looked up as I was talking to you guys. My line was virtually on the floor. That's got to be a fish. Has to be. Yeah, we'll give him a minute and we'll come back to it.
But there we go, there's that bait we just, well, that rig we just baited up. Little mackerel baits. Let's send it up there and see what's on the other rod. Nice out there in the feeding zone. Well, let's check that one that went earlier on. It did give quite a good bite, but it hasn't gone since. But you never know, but someone might be sat on it. Well, it might be, you know. Maybe something gone here. Bit of weight there. Oh, pulled in. A flobber. A little pulled in. On the lug with that one. For any of you that don't know, pulled in, a nightmare. I'm white in for spinning your rigs up. And that has spun my rig up big time. That's probably going to go in the bin. But uh, that'll go in the freezer for the conga baits. A nice pout in. Sweet. That's conga drugs right there. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Oh my God. I'm kind of glad I got that on film. Look at the state of that. Woo. And that's why they call it a bird's nest, people. That is a true, true bird's nest. Look at the state. Ugh. That is going to come off my rod in my box. And I'll look at that another day. That's not today's problem. That's tomorrow's problem. Got another good, I think, guys. I didn't even have a bite or anything, just thought I'd set the camera up while I'm filming, while I'm uh, checking my bait. And there we go. Now the Bernard, the Gurnard. Little tub Gurnard on the mackerel again. Lovely. Look at the patterns on his fins, look. If I can get him to all his fins out for us. People want to see. Look at that. I got all these in the fish tank actually. And uh, these little crawlers here, they actually walk along the sand with them. It's crazy. Which I, I've said before, I'll be doing a video, which I'm working on at the minute. So it won't be too much going. I'm going to have a video done for that. But yeah. Let's get my thumb in this mouth, suck. Because those fins are stunning. Look at the colours on that. That's crazy, isn't it? All the blues and the red in it, and green. That's mad, isn't it? Proper pretty fish. He's grunting. I think he's saying he wants to go home, so let's send him home. Well, guys, unfortunately, that is the end of another day. Here on the mighty the Chesil Beach. Stan's all packed up, Robbie's all packed up. They're both taking stuff down to the, to the, well, just over the hill there. And uh, left me all on my own. But oh well. Oh well. So I'll just get these last two rods in now. Get back to the car. Never know, we might even have a fish on one of these last two rods. I don't think there's anything on here, but always be hopeful, you know, you never know. I know there's nothing on here, but you know, it's nice to be positive, I suppose. Nope. 
Anything on that one? Well, let's quickly check the other one now. So I've got to reel them both in now. And see if there's anything on there before we uh, shoot off. Well, unfortunately, there was nothing on the last two casts. But I've had an enjoyable day, you know? Nice to be out. I don't think Dan and, and Robbie's had the best day, to be honest with you. But that's fishing, I suppose. You're not going to have an amazing session every time you go. So it's part of, part of the sport, I suppose. And again, these, all, these last two rigs packed up. Everything else is packed, ready to go. Get the rods back in the rod holder and get back to the car. Like I said, Robbie and Dan have taken all the stuff back over the other side of the hill so they don't have to do it all in one go. Which is clever, I suppose. But then you're still doing twice the distance of walking, so... Aim for himself, I suppose. But anyway, once again, thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the next one.